Copy or copying. Take three. Today we're going to learn how to disassemble an imaging unit for a Toshiba eStudio machine. I should mention that I am doing this on my desk here and I have a light shining on it and this is not something that you want to do. These drum units are light sensitive and you definitely don't want to do this in a brightly lit environment, especially one with sunlight, because what that'll do is that'll just ruin, it's kind of like film in your camera, if you get a little light in there, it kind of uh, just ruins the whole thing. Um, this drum here for me is actually a bad one, that's why I'm using it to show you guys. You can also follow this process to replace the green drum if you ever have an issue with it. If it's not producing perfect images, chances are that this can be replaced and it will help your image quality tremendously. Another thing you can do during this process is refill your developer. The developer is located underneath this gray section of the imaging unit and this piece will actually pop off and you will see an auger underneath there and I'll show you that a little bit later. But if you ever notice you go to print and you see hash marks going across your paper kind of in a diagonal uh, sort of layout, that means that your developer is running low and you need to refill it. To get started, the first thing we have to do is take off the plastic plate that is on, um, on my right-hand side of this unit. Now there are two screws that are holding this on. One is gonna be found right in here. You can kind of see that. And then there's another one that's gonna be right through here, if you can see that. Okay, once we have the two screws off, this plate on the end kind of just comes right off. You might have to wiggle it a little bit. And oops, one thing I forgot to tell you, the charger wire cleaner, this little green handle pops right off. You need to take that off before the black plate will come off. And push that back in. And you can see it, it is still connected with some electrical wiring. You can leave that on if you want, but if you're having a little bit of difficulty, you can disconnect those and we can always reconnect them later. And then what you see on the end here is this metal plate. This metal plate is the next thing to come off and it's held on by two screws, right there and right there. Okay, now I've taken off those two screws and this metal plate will actually now just slide right off, but keep in mind the way it is positioned. Basically, you want these flared edges going to the outside of the unit. So we'll set that aside and then we also wanna take off this bearing that's on the axle that's going through the drum unit. Keep in mind how that goes also. The flared part of that is gonna to go towards the inside of the unit. And then the last thing we have to do is take off this plastic clip right here that's on the axle itself. There's a little squeeze tabs on either side that you're just gonna squeeze and pull off, okay? Once we have that, we can go around to the opposite side, grab the other end of the axle and just pull it straight out. Once that happens, the whole unit will actually come apart like a sandwich and then you can take out the whole drum unit. In order to go, in order to go even further, these two pieces will actually come completely apart and you can see they're being, it's being held on right back here by this peg and then also up here in the front by a little tiny peg here. So if you just pull the drum side of it forward, it comes right apart. Now this side is the developer side, and again you don't want to turn this upside down because you're going to uh, spill developer and toner all over the place. So keep that upright, don't shake it around too much, uh, let's just set that aside for right now. Now that we have this apart, let's look at the drum side. You can see right here what looks kind of like yellowish. That's actually the drum blade, and you can look at one of my other videos to, to learn how to clean that. But since I have it open, I'm just gonna take a quick look along the edge. I wanna make sure that this, this edge is nice and clean. There's no tears or scrapes or, or cuts in it. And then most importantly though, I wanna make sure that none of this developer or toner has hardened on the end. If, if something has gotten hard or crusty on there, it's gonna roll against this drum unit in the same spot and it's gonna eventually make a scratch in the drum. That scratch you can never repair and you'll have to replace the whole drum unit if that ever happens. You'll notice uh, lines across your paper. But very quickly, if you are interested in learning how to get this drum blade out of here, 
Um, what you can do, it's actually being held on by two screws, one here on the back side and one here on the back side. You take those two out, it falls right off. You can do a nice clean on it, put it back, put those two screws back, and you're done. It's a very quick and easy process. Um, uh, you, but you don't have to tear all this apart in order to do it. You can actually do it when everything is put together. The last thing I want to mention on the drum side is this grid that's right here. And it kind of looks like a mesh, and it should be nice and taut. And what this is, is the charge grid. And this just kind of regulates the electricity that's going through, making sure everything is consistent and constant. Uh, you want to make sure that that's cleaned also. Sometimes developer and toner gets dropped on here, and as this heats up, it'll kind of crust up and, and solidify a little bit in some of these little holes. You can get some emery paper, or very, very high grit sandpaper will work as well. Uh, and you can just scrape this mesh in order to kind of loosen and get rid of some of that hardened on toner and developer. All right, so we're gonna set this aside and we're gonna go back to the developer side. Now, as I mentioned before, this gray piece will actually come off completely and that'll give us access to the developer and the developer auger that's pushing all this around. This is held on by three little plastic clips. It's one right here on the end. You have one right here, and then you also have right here at the end. So sometimes these can be a little flimsy, so you want to be careful, but what I like to do is just get a screwdriver and clip that out first, and kind of tilt the whole thing forward so it stays out, and then with my fingernail over here, I can, or with the screwdriver, I can clip that out, and then all the way on the end, I can lift that last one up. Once I do that, this gray piece comes off, and voila! See, this auger here is actually very, very low with developer. I took some developer out of this unit to refill another unit, uh, but this is just for educational purposes, so no big deal. Um, but as you can see, the auger kind of pushes the developer along the side, and then it pushes it over underneath this roller, where it's attracted to this roller, and then it goes to the actual green drum unit, then it goes to the transfer belt, and then it goes to the paper. So it's a little bit long process, but uh, that's basically how it works. And if you're ever gonna go and refill this, make sure you're putting developer in here, not toner. A lot of people get this confused. They're two separate functions. So the developer, you should fill up about two thirds. You know, you don't wanna cover up the auger completely. You wanna give it a little bit of airspace so you can still, or so it can still push everything down pretty freely and keep it moving in the same general direction. So that's basically how that works. One other thing I should mention is this air filter. Um, sometimes developer and toner gets in here. You wanna make sure that that's clean as well. It's not something real important that you're gonna be doing all the time, but since we have it open and since we have it accessible, why not? That just slides straight up and you can use a little bit of canned air or an air compressor, blow that out, make sure it's nice and clean. You can also clean up this section here as well. And to get it back on, it just slides down and kind of clips in place like that. Okay, now let's put it all back together. You can see that on this gray piece, it has a couple little tabs here in the front and it has some receiving holes right here on the developer portion. So that's just going to clip in there and you're just gonna kinda push it back until all those clips clip in place to make sure it's nice and tight. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is put together the drum side of it. And this is where you would put your new drum in, obviously, if that's what your end game was. But as you can see, it has a black gear on the end of the drum and there's a little white gear here in the corner and those things have to line up. I find it easier to put in the non-gear side and then this just slides in like that, okay? Once the drum's in, then we go to put the axle in. And sometimes this can be a little tricky, but you just kinda gotta move it around, get it all the way in there. And you'll notice on the end here, it's kind of sticking out a little bit. Sometimes you have to turn it. Until it gets all the way in. 
Okay, you'll see, and you'll still notice a little bit of a gap there, but that's okay, that's, a, that's fine. And then on the other side, what you wanna look for is this little notch in the peg. And that's what we put that white clip on. And I'm always confused. I like to put it on this way, but that's not the right way. You actually want to do it like that until you hear it clip. There we go. That's on. It's not coming out. It's in there nice and tight. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and bring this whole thing back together. And remember, we have a peg here that's going to go in this far hole. And then we also have a peg here on the front, this actual backside of this longer peg, that's gonna go in this hole right here. So they kinda have to go at the same time, but one peg is longer, so it makes it pretty easy. Put that together, and then what you're gonna do is fold it up like a sandwich again, and it should kinda clip in place, and it should stay there as long as you don't knock it around too much. The next thing we have to do is put the metal plate back on. Remember, it also has the bearing, and it's the bearing is going to go in with the flared side to the back and push that in. And then you'll notice on this metal piece that it has a little tiny section that's been pushed in, and that's actually where the charge wire cleaner rod needs to be threaded through. So I'm going to put that through like that. And then this all slides on, onto the axle, nice in place. And then we're gonna, we're gonna put two screws in here and here to uh, secure all that. Okay, we have the metal plate on, we have it secured with two screws, it's nice and tight. The last thing we have to do is put this plastic cap on the end of it. It's kind of tricky if you still have it hooked up to the electrical connections because this charge wire rod still has to be threaded through here. And you can see a tiny hole down here at the bottom. It's kind of got a curved cutout where that's gonna go. Sometimes I find it easier to kind of pull this out just a little bit. And then at the very end, once we have that threaded through, we wanna make sure that this little wing here is down in its place because it's gonna have this hole here at the bottom that it needs to be secured to. Okay, so first let's do the charge wire. All right, so I got that in place. I'm gonna pull it out a little more so I don't lose my spot. Then I'm gonna push this down, and then the whole plate kinda of clips on. You know you have it right when this little nipple here comes through the hole. Now keep in mind we still have two screws, one in this top right section, and then one through this hole here. Okay, we have successfully put everything back together, and the last thing I'm gonna do is put my charge wire handle on, and that just clips on the end like that. Another thing I like to do when I get it to this stage is just check the charge wire. First thing I do is just pull out the charge wire rod. Now you should feel a slight vibration as you pull it out. All right, so that sounds good. It still feels like that charge wire is nice and tight in there. If you don't feel the charge wire when you do that, you may have to replace the charge wire altogether. Now, in order to do that, you have to disassemble everything like we did. Um, but you can check the charge wire by looking underneath and through this little opening in this metal plate. Okay, that's where the charge wire is. Keep in mind, you don't want to tip this over because, again, there's going to be developer and toner in there. So what I do is I hold it up, up above my head and I look down the length of this, and what you should see is a little, what looks like a little tiny saw blade. You wanna make sure that that's nice and tight from front to back. If you see any drooping in it, or if, um, if it's just not real tight, then you'll probably have to replace that, and you're probably getting an error code that begins with C, okay? As you can see, once we get everything back together, there's a little bit of give and take between the two pieces, that's okay. But if you notice that these pieces are kind of flopping apart a little bit more, kind of like this end unit is, you may have a broken clip right here. And mine actually does. You can see this little white piece is supposed to clip on to the actual drum unit and kind of keep it together. Mine's busted, but that's probably the issue if you notice that little 
extra give and take. That little clip here on the end isn't a real big issue because if this unit is actually in the machine, the machine itself is actually going to keep it together and nice and tight. So that is it. The basics of tearing apart and putting back together an imaging unit for a Toshiba eStudio machine.